All right, welcome to the Robert Show. I'm here at Data Innovation Summit, and look who I have with me, Stephen. Stephen, welcome to the Robert Show. Thanks a lot. Super nice. Super nice meeting you. Awesome, man. Uh, today we're going to talk a lot around AI, about what's happening in the data space, but not only just that. Uh, also, would love to know about what you're working on. Uh, would you like to start with a quick introduction just for our audience, and also? What company, which is your company? I want to know about the name as well, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, so what I do majorly is I uh, help large enterprises uh, to then scope out their AI program and then initially get it going. Yeah. Meaning what I do, I work with the board uh, to set up the longer plans at the KPIs, but then what I do is then start running it as an in interim kind of AI officer right. or so. Uh, and you mentioned my company name. It uh, has a very long acronym that a lot of people are like, what does this? What does it even mean? <laughs> uh, so the company name is You Don't Know What uh, You Know. You Don't and Know What You Know. Yes. Exactly. It comes from uh, a long-time client of ours, a very big one, was going to space. And they had lots of information. And most likely they could answer the question. However, they couldn't because of all of the information was hiding in the different silos. So mm. we kept saying, You Don't Know What You Know. No. And then that becomes the tagline, and then I got known as the you don't know what you know guy, and then that kept on going, and then here I am. Wow, I love it. I love the you know the story behind it. Thanks for sharing that. Also quickly, because you work with a lot of uh, large enterprises and a lot of uh, large uh, size companies as an AI officer, I would love to know a little about, you know, from an enterprise perspective, what is the competitive advantage in AI? And yeah. How you kind of bringing that on board? Yeah, I, I think it's super interesting. So what what now happens is that we went outside, and I usually call this is the year of the POC death. All of the POCs has to go to the side. Either you prove value or you're out. Yes. With that said, we all know that the only way to prove value with especially language models is that you need to connect it to either tools or your own data or both, right? Right. However. Then we're back to data engineering, and I guess that's why I am moderating the M9 stage, because I think the most important part is to get your data right, right? And then you can start building agent, and even agents that clean and structure your data, right? So I would say the only advantage would literally be uh, data, but then the problem is this is also the one that is very often overlooked. It's not sexy. A lot of people go like, why are you on the data engineering stage? <laughs> and that's why. Yeah, no, I think uh, that's a very good perspective and a, a good point there. Also, in terms of, uh, since we are on this topic, when do you think we'll reach AGI? Oh, even better. Uh, this is a trick question. Uh, <laughs> because a lot of people talk about this often, right? And right. I usually say, but why have we, have we not already reached it with the combination of things? Because if we think about a lot of these things, there's not a single model, but there are models working with reflections and tools and planning and multi-agents and sort of things. So I would argue, isn't the question really, when do we stop acting like robots? Right. Because, I mean, take a simple use case. Uh, let's take a recruiter. There are a lot of people here looking for jobs. So the recruiter put out the job ad. It's so annoying to write it. So Hen is then using a language model to make a very long one. Uh, the applicant then reads it. It's too long, summarize it using a language model, send it in, and then the recruit uh, talent officer then use the language model again. So what we're doing is literally, we are the API for AI. <laughs> so I think the right. question is, when is the time we stop uh, acting? So maybe you can answer this one. Do you have any idea? I think, you know, to be honest, in terms of human plays a very, very yeah. important role in whatever we are doing, for yeah. sure. And we act as API, as you say. Yeah. It's something pretty interesting because uh, a lot of enterprise leaders kind of, you know, also feel that uh, what's the next step uh, yeah. in terms of us implementing AI? Yeah. Who are going to be those agents? Uh, yeah. No, but I think th this is the point what I think is like super interesting, right? Because we very often focus on technology and we build technology, but what is equally and maybe even on an enterprise level more important, how does technology in turn rewrite our behavior? Right. And so when we implement technology, how does that rewrite yeah. us? And then this is where we will never come to AGI because we build new tools, the tools builds us, so we're just pushing this. This is amazing. I, I am I, I'm totally aligned with what you're talking about. And uh, also quickly, in terms of the LLMs as well, it's been almost a year since we've you know got into the adoption phase. 
what do you see? What's coming up next? Uh, there are obviously so many LLMs out there, and so many companies obviously building their own as well. Yeah. What do you think about it? No, I mean it's it's like insane. I, I said in my opening uh, remarks, yeah. uh, the only thing that is growing on a speed faster than the new models coming out is the LinkedIn AI experts. But one thing that really shook my mind, uh, I remember in the uh, top of the year, so I was in South Korea yeah. spending time. Uh, I sat down with the CTO of Upstage. They have uh, built a fantastic model called Solar. And then they showed a little bit where they're working on. So we looked upon the small models, which right. is now the hype thing coming. And model, models running local on your Mac or on your phone. And to be honest, I was mind blown. I, 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 I couldn't compute. It, this was like the same experience of being on the internet, speaking to another person exactly. in another country. I'm like, Where's the connection? And I was like, I want to look under the hood. There is no cable here. There is no Wi-Fi. How, how can, how can yes. this work? And I think this is the thing that we're going to have to talk much more about because that in combination with the large ones, yeah. this is where we start seeing that. And then I don't, I don't even know where we're going when we go back to the previous questions, like how will this rewrite the way we work? And I think uh, one thing that I see a lot is that it's not that obvious that my uh, colleagues would be a person anymore. I would say that it would be a mix of different things. So I don't know. We're in for a hell of a ride, I would argue. This is very interesting, and definitely, uh, you know, I think, you know, obviously, LLMs is one thing, but small uh, language yeah. models is the new and trending thing. Which is yeah. No, it's it's just that it's all of a sudden becomes so accessible and and so, so easy, easy to chew, and and it's just like. Because that's the frequency, right? The more you can actually do it. I mean, if you have something very big and very expensive that takes a lot of time to fine tune and train, then there will only be for a few. few. But then there will be a very structured way. So what I like with these small ones is that it will allow for a lot of people to do stupid things. Because when we do stupid things, there will be like, you know, one, two, three, four, six that didn't work. And then there's a brilliant coming out of that. So we will stumble upon the most crazy innovation by just literally playing around because that's how we come Love up it. with things very Love often it. yes also broken down then the genius sitting there alone in the chamber thinking forever and coming with a brilliant idea <laughs> so go out break things and have fun because that's going to change the world fail and fail faster and then learn again yeah right? exactly exactly that's awesome uh, one last thing for our audience if they want to reach out to you they want to learn about you know obviously What's yeah. your company name? You don't know. What you know? You know. Yeah, right? exactly. You don't know what you know. You know. So you know it already, and then you're hesitating. <laughs> yes. Uh, so if they want to reach out, learn more about you know uh, LLMs, AI, and in general as well, where can they reach out to you yeah. and learn more about your company? I, I think the easiest would be to go to my LinkedIn. Uh, I tend to connect with everyone. If you're not overly selling, then I will be slightly <laughs> restricted. So. That's the kind of uh, cliffhanger there. But other than that, I think uh, the network is the most important thing in learning, right? So I love it. Yeah. sometimes I'm the one learning and sometimes you're the one learning. And exactly. very often we don't even know which way because it's going both ways, both ways. which sure. is the cool part. So for all of you out there, uh, just connect. Find me on LinkedIn. There awesome. will be uh, a red background on the picture. You will see a guy looking like Steve Jobs. That's the irony <laughs> joke. Uh, and then connect. This is awesome, Stephen. Uh, it was such a pleasure hosting you on The Robert Show. Thanks for sharing all the great insights. Uh, yeah, likewise. Super. Have a good day. Thank you. You too.